I'm the outreach coordinator for the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Um, and I'm very pleased that we have our alumni guest joining us today. I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about him before I turn the time over to Alec. So Alex Nelson is Director of Marketing and Media at the Cache Valley Center for the Arts, the nonprofit that oversees the Ellen Eccles Theater, the Bullen Center, and the Thatcher Young Mansion in downtown Logan. Originally from American Fork, Utah, Alec came to Cache Valley in 2017 to attend Utah State and graduated this spring with a bachelor's degree in journalism and public relations with minors in computer science, music, and yoga. While at USU, he was heavily involved with student media, working as the Utah Statesman Managing Editor for a year and a half. And during college, he also interned at KSL in Salt Lake and was a peak summer research fellow in 2020. He now lives in Logan and hopes to attend graduate school in the future. Um, I'm going to turn things over to Alec. I do want to point out to you that before you leave today, please sign our sign-in sheet. Please grab swag that Alec brought with him. And we also have cookies that I intentionally put over there just because I wanted to honor the classroom rule of not eating in the classroom. But please take one as you go today so that you have a nice treat for the afternoon. And with that, Alec, the time is yours. Thank you so much. Cool, thank you. So yes, I'm Alec. Um, I just graduated, so I kind of see myself as a student, not an uh, alumni, but oh well, I'll get used to it. So yeah, just a little more about me. That's me in 2017. I was a baby, I think. Um, so yeah, I started in 2017. I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I got to USU. Um, my first major declared at USU was physics, and I'm about that didn't happen. But um, then I thought marketing, took some business classes, and didn't feel exactly right. So then I found the journalism department, and I really liked that. I always had been a news junkie. Um, and then I ended up choosing PR as my emphasis because I felt like that was the most broad like I would be able to learn. I wouldn't just have to write, I wouldn't just have to do like broadcast TV. I could kind of do a bit of everything. So in the process, I ended up getting involved with Statesman. That was our first cover last year for the school year. Um, and then this is a picture of me, I'm right there. Um, we went to India for my yoga minor. I did a little two week study abroad and it was very fun. That was something I was super thankful for at USU. Um, I also did a lot of research. I was an undergraduate research fellow, so I got to go present at the Capitol, which was fun. Um, and then that's me at graduation just a few months ago. But yeah, now I work at Cash Arts, the Eccles Theater. Um, you might you drive past it all the time. If you go down Main Street, it's right before you go down the hill on your way out of Logan. Um, it's a super nice place. I had only been there once before and I got free tickets and that's why, but uh, it is very nice. And so there's a theater, we have an artist gallery here upstairs. There's like art studios, a dance studio, a ballroom. Um, lots of art classes are taught up there. We have like a ceramic studio in the back. There's just a lot of fun things that happen there. And then around the corner over here, um, there's the Thatcher Young Mansion, which is a historical mansion that we use. Now it's used for like music lessons, uh, private lesson teachers rent it out. Um, here's the inside of the theater, super nice for Logan. <laughs> Every time I walk in, I'm just like, wow, how did Logan get this? But it's super <laughs> nice. Whoops, okay, is it gonna let us? Nope, so the next slide, I guess was going to say, why are digital portfolios important? So we'll just stick right into it. Um, and I apologize, I have lots of GIFs or GIFs, depending on how you say it. Oh, is it gonna play? Okay, well, apparently we're having issues on this one, but there we go. <laughs> the first reason portfolios are great is because jobs are very nice. Um, hopefully, whatever our goals are after we are done here. Hopefully we can use it to our best of abilities. And for a lot of that, a lot of people, a job is kind of the goal of going to college. So digital portfolios definitely help in the job search, in my experience. Um, and digital portfolios specifically are nice because binders I hate. Um, <laughs> and that's how you would no normally do a portfolio back in the day. But now we have lots of tools that we can use. So then we can show all sorts of things without having to send a binder to potential employer and then it's an excuse to brag like a lot of times we're told that we shouldn't that we should be humble and 
uh, not take a main stage, but a digital portfolio is like your chance to just go all out, like show everything you've done, brag about yourself a little bit, make yourself stand out. Um, another reason it's important, and I noticed this as I was creating my digital portfolio during school, um, I had a few classes where we talked about it. So I started forming it even before I had a lot of content to put in a digital portfolio. Um, but it helps me not only with like gathering and noticing areas where maybe I didn't have as much content as I would like or like material, um, but it also helped me learn a little bit more about design and web design, even though I was using pretty simple tools to do it. Um, I think when a, a potential employer or somebody else looks at a digital portfolio, they're not only seeing the stuff you've done in the past at school or in an internship, stuff like that. But they're also seeing that you're able to like combine it all into a nice package that communicates well. So it not only helps you with those, those hard skills you're learning in school, but also helps you learn how to communicate what you've done effectively. Yep. Well, this is number five. Um, <laughs> it also helps you stand out from other applicants. I'm not completely sure how many other people like in my position had digital portfolios, but I know that it doesn't hurt to have a digital portfolio. Like if anything, it's just going to make you stand out to your employer even more um, because we don't want to just be a regular mom. We want to be a cool mom like Regina's mom. So we're just going to check out some portfolios and we can, since it's pretty small, we can like discuss what we like, what we don't like. We can start with mine, which isn't perfect by any means. So feel free to critique, but here's mine. Um, I just have the main page is like a little intro to me. I have a LinkedIn link just so people can get to me faster. And then my resume and social. So that's the main page. Um, the way I have it laid out, I just have the resume next. I just uploaded a PDF version on that. And then as far as samples, I just had like a few different types. So I ended up deciding to separate them out into what type of sample I'm looking at. Um, so for like writing, I thought about trying to list it all myself, but then I realized that most of the places I write for already have connection is not perfect. Um, well, I guess we won't go to the Statesman. Maybe we'll try KSL. Or not. There we go. So yeah, most like news sites, you can just go to an author page. So I thought that was a lot like simpler and a lot more appealing than me trying to list out every single thing I've written. Um, let's go back here. So yeah, and then this is just another PDF there and then oops we'll go to photography photography is pretty simple I just did a gallery style and then design these are all things from cash charts that I've done um, I just made it into a slideshow and then for a website because a website changes so often I was trying to figure out how to best show that so I ended up screen recording just to show what it was like on September 24th so this week uh, just so people could see what it looks like. Um, so yeah, there's that page design. And then audio video. Most of these are actually from school projects. Uh, yeah, all of them are related to school. So like all three of these videos and these two were both from an internship. So. I just uploaded them to YouTube and set them as unlisted because I don't want other people to just watch them. But I'm okay if a potential employer wants to watch them. And then the last one I have on mine is social media. So it's kind of similar to those other ones, just a gallery of some of my social media posts. I have a blog, which I never update. I think the last time was 20, yep, 2020. Well, maybe I'm just taking a pandemic break. And then the last page is Let's get in touch. It's a contact page. Um, so they can either find me directly on social media or I made this box. Honestly, it's, mm, I get a lot of spam through this <laughs> box here, but I figured like 
the the image of me accepting like messages from people was more important than uh, getting that spam. And luckily, my email does pretty good at filtering it out. But I just wanted to show people that like I'm I'm open to talking. Um, but yeah, any thoughts on mine? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I thought you were raising your hand. <laughs> um, any ideas that came to your mind or things that you might want to implement when you make a digital portfolio? Yeah. What's like the best tool of making your portfolio? I mean, I'm guessing you use Weebly. Yeah, so I used Weebly and I actually do have, in a second I'll bring up the others again. Um, I used Weebly, so Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, there's probably others, those are probably the main three though. Those are really easy website creators and I think all three of them have free options. So I'm not paying for this, which is why this little guy stays here. Um, but it works for me. Like maybe in the future, if I were getting really high up and I was really looking for a job, I might pay for it so that I don't have that there. But for now, and like as a college student, I don't want to pay for it. So <laughs> um, it worked out for me. But yeah, Weebly, Wix, at Cash Arts, we use Wix. Um, they're basically just ways where instead of you having to code the whole website yourself, um, somebody else has done it for you. So then it's more like interactive. You just drag and drop things. You don't have to do a lot of coding. So. And the URL, what's the URL? Um, so the URL for this website specifically is alecnelson.weebly.com. I also figured out how, because I wanted to make it a little more official when I put it on my resume. So I just paid for the domain. So it just read your X if it ever does. There we go. So it just takes me there. So then I can just tell people my name and go to that website. Um, and it's pretty simple. I would say like if you know somebody that's in a web dev class or something, they will definitely know how to help you buy your domain. And luckily my name isn't extremely common, so it's still available. But. Alec, can you speak to, I mean, obviously here you point out like Weebly makes it sort of pretty easy to just like teach, you know, learn as you go and use the software. Are there any um, other resources you use or skills that you use to, I mean, you mentioned that you had started some of these in class, but are there other resources you found really helpful? For yeah. Yourself, um, learning or? Yeah, I would, when I was preparing for this, I did find a really good website. And I will maybe, I don't know how I could share, but I would just like Google digital portfolios. There's some really good websites, blogs that have a compilation of interesting, um, interesting existing digital portfolios. And I definitely use those to like kind of navigate, like um, splitting these up into categories was something I got from somebody else's because I was trying to figure out how to nicely display a bunch of different kinds of things. Um, and that worked out. So I would definitely Google for like building the website. If I ever have problems, like Weebly does have help guides, but then also YouTube videos are always super helpful. There's almost always a YouTube video about how to fix something. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? Cool. Any other thoughts before we move on to somebody else's? Just jump back over here. So this is one I found. So this is I don't. She's Iranian um, and lives in the UK, but she's a designer slash photographer. I didn't even notice she has a typo right there. So that's something we can criticize. <laughs> but um, I did really like her website though. So uh, we'll just explore for a second, see what we like. So we have these, it's creative photos, but when you roll over them, you can click on them, I think. Maybe it was the other, yeah, there we go. So she has everything categorized since she is a photographer so that you, she has everything categorized. So when you click on it on the main page, it'll take you to that specific style of photography. descriptions on each of them. Very simple, which I thought was kind of cool, especially if you're in like a graphic 
based industry it is probably important to make it look appealing. And then she also has this about me get in touch page. Um, just a little about her, get in touch button, which I shouldn't have clicked on that, but it'll probably bring up my email. <laughs> There we go, yep, <laughs> cool. So there's that. I was trying to figure out if this wasn't loading when I was looking at it on my own, but maybe she just doesn't wanna show her face, which is totally acceptable. That was something uh, I had to decide on mine because um, I don't know if you've heard, like for resumes when I've been in classes, there's like a divide on whether to include your photo on things just because you could potentially open yourself up to bias even unintentional bias by having your photo on something rather than just letting your work speak for itself. I decided to just because I wanted to have, like try to create some kind of personal connection with people who visit the website. But I do understand that like somebody might decide not to hire me because I look too young or something like that. Um, so that's definitely something to think about. It looks like that her blog is just an Instagram, but so hers is a lot more simple, a lot less pages. But I was wondering, what are your thoughts on her page? What do you like? What do you dislike? I think it's really like aesthetically pleasing. Like you open it up and you're like, hey, this looks nice. Yeah. There's nothing busy going on. When I was a few weeks ago, when I started researching for this, I came across a, I was just looking for examples of good portfolios and I found this one article that was written in 2009 and it took me a little while to realize it was in 2009 because I was like scrolling through I was like these are all terrible like who designed <laughs> these but I was like oh it was 2009 there were different tools available back then they were probably looking for different things but I feel like this is like they're definitely aesthetically pleasing like you said it and like it says she's an artist, so I think it's definitely important for her that that's the vibe you get from her page when you visit. Awesome, any other thoughts? I would just add, Alex, that, you know, I agree. I think it's visually really stunning. And even though, you know, I realized that here in class, like a lot of your work that you're doing might not necessarily be visual, right? Although some mm -hmm. of you have skills as designers or you may be hobby photographers where you may have done video work but I think that there can still be a place for visuals even if that's the case because giving people something to look at even if you're going to show the writing sample makes sense or I heard recently from a graduate student who used their digital portfolio in their graduate school applications and what they wanted to use it for was to like highlight a lot of the service and like community building work that they had done which was relevant to their application for grad school but that they could only say so much in like a 500 word or 1500 word personal statement right so they included a link at the bottom of their statement which took people to a lot of visuals and writing samples but showing the kind of sort of documenting rather the work that they had done so i think that visuals have a place even for those of us who may not be working in a background that is design based or Based. So, yeah, that's a really great example. Yeah, for sure. And the next one I have is actually a copywriter. So, it's somebody who she had like her main thing is writing, not necessarily uh, visuals. But I just wanted to bring it up because it still looks nice. Um, so, this is Kelsey O'Halloran. She's in Portland. She does copywriting for websites, she works with companies. So even though a lot of hers, like there's way more text here than on the photographer's site, it still looks visually appealing. Like things are set up nicely. Um, she has a little testimonial here. I don't have any of those on my website, but might be worth looking into. And then like she, she does writing for websites. So here she has screenshots of websites she's written for with those testimonials. You can go look at their website or look at how she worked with them to achieve their goals. And then down here, there's a book a chat with her. 
she also has a little podcast free podcast that you can get but so she has a bigger website but this is just her portfolio page um i thought it was kind of cool that everything's just contained into one um it feels like it has a nice flow like <laughs> i'm not a design student but i really like how this outline continues into the next section so it like brings you down into the next section um but and even though her thing is text she still finds ways to include visual elements in her design any thoughts on this one for you guys cool yeah i just i wanted to bring up this one just because it is because like as a student i was thinking about like english majors like they might not have as many visual things but there's still ways to portray your your material in visually pleasing ways it might take a little extra work and like adjusting but you can still find ways even if you don't have a lot of visual things to look at um let's come back here one thing i guess you could yeah consider too like cause there's there's a lot of like like royalty free or mm. you know like images that you can use that yeah you pay someone to use their images yeah so, so. if you're looking for good royalty free free royalty free images unsplash.com and pexels it's like pixels but with an e both of those um their websites are just full of photos that photographers basically donate to them um you don't have to have a credit if you don't want. They offer it to you in case you want to be nice to the photographer, but you're really able to use it for whatever you want after that. So yeah, Unsplash and Pexels. So those are super useful um, if you're looking to add some more flavor to your website. Uh, so yeah, here's just some tips I thought of. My gifts aren't working, oh well. <laughs> so the first step, the first thing I did when I was doing this was just compiling everything I had done up to that point. And like I said, I started doing it probably my second year, first year or second year of college. So I didn't really have that much stuff. I hadn't started working for the Statesman. I hadn't had any internships yet. Um, but I started to like collect any class projects that we worked really hard on. I would, um, I would put those on the website. If I had any jobs in the past or internships, if I had done any volunteer work, just anything I could show that I wanted to show future employers, I just started compiling it all, putting them into folders so that I could keep track of it all. Um, because that can be a lot of work if everything's on different sites. Um, if you noticed on my page, I have a lot of screenshots. That's where I got a lot of my like visual things. So social media, stuff like that. But um, like I also have documents embedded on the website, which could be usable if you're doing English or research papers, stuff like that. So yeah, find a website service, Weebly, Wix, Squarespace. Um, I've used both of these pretty heavily. I haven't done a lot with Squarespace, Squarespace, but I'm pretty sure all three have free options and they work just fine, especially for a college student. I don't think anybody's gonna care if you have a little Weebly thing in the corner at this point in time. And then get to work. So like I said, YouTube and help guides were super helpful to me. I like I had a computer science minor, so I had some experience with web, but I definitely would not have been able to create my website as it is just on my own with coding. So uh, Weebly was super helpful for that. Um, and whenever you're looking for help on something, if something isn't working out, there's always that help guide. And I use YouTube religiously to figure out how to do things. Even now at Cash Arts, um, when I can't figure out how to do something on Photoshop, I'll just YouTube it and it's always there. So um, YouTube and help guides are great to help you figure out how to lay stuff out. Another nice thing about a website is that nothing is permanent on a website. Like you can always undo things. You can always change things around. If you go down a certain direction and you don't like how it's appearing, it's you can always change it. That's a really nice thing about digital things. So don't get too stressed if it doesn't look exactly how you like right at first. Um, 
as you continue, you'll get better and you'll be able to arrange things as you want. And then the last thing I had for this one was just putting your per personality into it. Um, that's something I kind of tried to do on my page. I think I think about like resumes and how polished they are and clean. And then like cover letters, they're very clean as well. They're very businessy, I guess. But I and I wanted my portfolio to fit in that businessy world, I guess. But I also wanted to make sure that like the person on the website could get to know me, even if it was just through a digital, um, impersonal way. So, however that applies to your website, I would just recommend putting a little personality, whether that's just an about me page or um, I, I, I try to incorporate some like slight humor into my page um, just because that's how I feel. So don't, don't make it so polished that it's like not a person. Make sure that the person who visits your website can actually tell and learn a little bit about you. Um, some things to consider as well as you're making. So like I said before, picture is a good thing to think about whether you want to include the picture or not. Um, as we saw, Simon, the photographer, she didn't have a picture, which is totally fine. Um, it all depends on what you're looking for. Um, I asked my boss, because she had looked at my portfolio when they were looking to hire me, and she said she was very impressed by it. So I asked her what kinds of things were important to her. Um, she said that the fact that it was so nicely organized out by item, um, she really enjoyed that. So organization seems to be important. Um, she also liked how easy it was to contact. I have multiple spots on my website that I tried to make sure I had socials or my email um, just because I didn't want to put any hardships between a potential employer and getting in contact with me. Like if they like what they see, I want them to reach out to me. So uh, whatever that looks like for your website, just make sure there's ways for the person if they're interested to reach out to you. Um, also while you're, like I said, you can look up other people's portfolios online. You can even non-portfolio websites uh, like if you're looking at a news website, just notice what kinds of designs you like, um, whether it's a big picture that's effective or how they uh, do like font sizes or the types of fonts. Just notice what kinds of things are appealing to you and that will probably give you a good direction as to what you should do on your own website. And then my last thing is just proofread everything. So even though like in my view, I, I want to have my portfolio be a little more personal. That doesn't give me like permission to go crazy and make it look like Instagram, I guess. Look, we still want it to be professional. Um, and especially if you've been working on the website on your own for like a week or two and you're feeling good about it, always have somebody else look at it because they will immediately see things that you didn't because uh, once you're into something really deep, it's easy to just gloss over obvious errors. So proofread before you start sending it out would be important. In conclusion from uh, Kate McKinnon as Rudy Giuliani. Um, <laughs> digital portfolios allow you to show off soft and hard skills. Uh, having a well-designed digital portfolio helps you stand out, especially coming out of college. Um, I, again, I don't know how many others had a digital portfolio when I was applying to jobs, but I definitely feel like it helped. Um, it definitely did not hurt. It just gave another thing to employers to help them get to know me, see how I might fit into their organization. Um, and this isn't limited to only careers. Like if you're planning on going to grad school, I think a digital portfolio included, like Andrea was saying, something digital just strengthens your your application, your resume. Um, it, it provides more depth to your character, I guess. It lets employers or grad school see what you're all about. Um, and that's what I just said. Yeah, portfolios provide a way for your potential employer to get to know you. And you can start now, even if you um, don't think you have a lot right now, if you haven't had a ton of classes, you're brand new, you haven't done many internships, um, 
there's still things you can put together, um, research papers from classes, just things you're proud of that you think would help communicate um, who you are, what kinds of positions or grad schools you're looking to get into. Um, and I would also say like, if you're having a hard time finding an internship, like a lot of my stuff came from internships or volunteer work. Um, like volunteer work is always open or even if you can't find somebody to work for, um, for like design, like social media design, I don't think there's any problem with designing stuff that could be used in the future, not that they're not necessarily for something. So if you have something like a side project, you just wanna make, write a paper about something or design a social media graphic, even if it isn't for something, I think something is better than nothing, even if it hasn't been used for something yet. But yeah, that is all I had for you guys. Um, I do have some, a link, my email. This is the address for the theater. Um, so you're welcome to stop by. We can always do tours if you want to check out the theater. But uh, I also just wanted to open it up to any questions, comments, um, things I didn't cover. <laughs> I was a little more comprehensive than I thought, I guess. But. <laughs> That's great. That's good. Well, and I'll mention as well that, you know, I think Alex has done a great job of like breaking down how you might start this. And I love it, especially as a tool for college students because, and Gannon, who works, I'll put you on the spot, he works for the Career Design Center, can speak to this, right? Like, it can be really hard as a college student to create that first resume if your experiences are limited to like, one job, it might not be a job that you're thrilled with, right? Like that can start just not there's anything wrong with that, right? But like it can be hard. Like you're working in retail or you're working in food service. I was a waitress too, right? So like put that as your only job on your resume or babysitting or lifeguard. That's another one I used to see all the time when I was hiring students, right? Um so you're often trying to create a resume around limited experiences, limited classwork, volunteer experiences. And sometimes those things don't stand out on a resume or it's hard to make them stand out on a resume. I think this is a wonderful way to like show them who you are as a person and it lends a professional touch even if your resume says, I don't have much professional experience yet, right? Because a lot of you guys are doing things in classes that could really be sold to employers. It, whether you're writing for the Eggies Go um, blog through Colin Flint's classes or you're creating videos in Brian Champagne or Chris Garth's classes, right? Like you're doing things in your classes here in CHAP that are vital for employers. I, I, we even hear from employers that like they just need someone who's really good at Excel because they're terrible with Excel. Like, my goodness, if you're taking class that involves like major Excel like prowess, like show that off. But I think this can really be a great way to flush out some of those things that might not fit on one page resume, but that can nevertheless really give you an edge over someone else who might have, you know, a comparable resume and hasn't had maybe a ton of professional experiences. Yeah, I don't know, Dan, if you would add anything to that or Alex. Yeah, I thought that was great. One thing that I did think that I've seen some students do that was really smart. So sometimes, in, like with class projects, you get an opportunity to kind of choose what you want to do to some extent. And I've seen students be really intentional in what they choose to do. So like if you know I, you want to work in a certain industry or a certain field, um, they've chosen projects that are going to be tailored and targeted to that field so that when they are looking for things that include in a portfolio, they have things that are going to be very relevant for the type of employers or maybe even the specific employer that they'd like to get a job or internship with, mm -hmm. which I think is really smart, right? You don't, you don't necessarily need to, you know, uh, this one, this this idea seems easy, so I'm going to do that. You can also think like, hey, I know I want to work in the gaming industry, so this project that I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure it's targeted and tailored to to that industry. Um, yeah, and that definitely will will make more of an impact on the employers that you share with. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, going with Andrea, like, uh, never be ashamed to put hobbies on there because like I have that whole photo page, and I've never like. I never took, besides Brian's class, I never took a photo class here on campus. It's just kind of a hobby for me. 
we've only been paid like twice but um i just wanted to like include that to show that uh, even even though it's not like professional it's still something i like to do and i think it just help at least like in a position where i'm going with marketing i think that helps um, even if it isn't like professional photography so especially like position where you're going to wear a lot of hats which yeah i think is a position you know, now right yeah like, the more breadth you can show the more like yeah mm -hmm. we weren't looking for a photographer but if you can do it in a pinch then yeah we want yeah. yeah cool yeah and i'm also always open like if you want to send um your portfolio over you can just send it to me via email and i can take a look i'm not like an expert as i say but um i do think my portfolio helped me in the job hunt coming right out of college i ended up getting the job offer during the finals week so that was a little crazy but um I, I do think um, that that aspect of my application definitely helped with that. Any other questions or thoughts? Well, I hope you guys feel like you learned something today. Like I definitely have learned a lot. This is super useful, Alex. Scratch the surface of this for a class that Dan and I took on remote work where they had to create a digital portfolio, but it was just for one assignment. Mm -hmm. So we just used PowerPoint, right? Which could be a great like starting point until you figure out Weebly or Wix or Squarespace. But it was really great to just think about how you can make things that you do visually interesting. And in my case, I focused on writing samples, right? Because the majority of marketing I do is, is written. Um, I rely on people like Nate in the front row to make some graphics because that's not, I'm beyond like Photoshop. <laughs> Photoshop, like I'm happy when I use the stamp tool. I'm like, woohoo. Um, but you know, you can still, there's regardless of what you're doing, whether it's internships in, you know, state government and you have a good spread of photos documenting the kind of projects that you did, just making what you do visually interesting. And as Alex said, being somebody who has this when none of the other applicants do, it really can help you stand out, whether you're applying for grad school or applying for a job. Um, and so Alex, we're just so appreciative that you were willing to put this presentation together and share that information with us today. So, Thank you for coming. I know it's a Friday afternoon and we've had a, a small group, um, so I won't ask us to clap for our guests because nothing is sadder than like five people clapping. <laughs> but we can pretend that we're the beat generation and let's give some snacks to Alex. <laughs> so thank you very much, Alex. Um, thank you everyone who came. And we still have time in the classroom if anyone wants to talk to Alex personally or has questions for him. But seriously, before you leave, please sign the sign-up sheet and please, I will open these cookies. Please eat some cookies, take cookies with you because it's Friday afternoon and mm -hmm. we've got a lot of cookies. So, yeah. um, someone needs to eat them. Yes. And the books, uh, 